MySQL and MongoDB are both database management systems that let you extract data and create reports. But they're also fundamentally quite different. Now, MySQL is a legacy table-based database. And that really has a structured system to it. Whereas MongoDB is a document-based system. Now, what does that mean? And when should you choose one over the other? Well, I'll tell you. But first, there's something far more important I want to address, which is where did these technologies get their weird names? So you probably already know that SQL, that stands for Structured Query Language. but why the pronoun? Well, actually, it's not. The my is a shortened name of one of the developer's daughters. There's also a MariaDB and a MaxDB, named after the same developer's other kids. And MongoDB, Mongo, that's a questionable shortening of the word humongous, as in MongoDB can store a humongous amount of data. All right, naming aside, what are the differences here? Well, MySQL, this was developed back in 1995, and for almost two decades has been the structured query language on which the mainstay of design modeling has been based for relational database management systems. MySQL is table-based, and therefore, it enforces a schema. And the schema is used so that all rows in a table will have the same columns, and those columns will have specific data types. MongoDB is more recent. This was founded in 2007, and was at the time a new approach to database design, representing data here as JSON documents. So it's object-based. Hey, real quick, if you're enjoying this content, please like and subscribe to this channel. Now, there's much about these two systems that are alike. At their core, both of them are database management systems that serve as the ground level information network for any type of digital site or space. Both MySQL and MongoDB support the same languages. For example, they both support Java and Python. So that's supported by MongoDB and by MySQL apps. Developers for both systems originally created these to be open source. Therefore, the code was freely available for anyone who wants to use and to distribute it. And you could consider both of these in a cloud native solution. But MongoDB was in some ways designed to supplant the legacy MySQL structure as an easier way to work with data. We can think of MySQL as being a bit more rigid with its architecture and really not quite as flexible for formatting data structures as MongoDB can be. Now, MySQL has two main components. There's a type of storage engine and language used to work with the data. So the storage engine is where the data is created, retrieved, sent, and stored. And the language is how you access it. MongoDB, on the other hand, is a NoSQL database. It's founded upon documents as the unit of data for search. It employs JSON language, and it uses MongoDB query language. Additionally, MongoDB employs Bison. Those are JSON-like documents that are binary coded into typically smaller files. And many developers find these easier to manipulate, making data management faster. Now, which one to use does, as always, depend on your use case. MySQL is considered highly accessible and secure, making it well suited to high traffic sites such as e-commerce sites and compliance heavy industries that require protocols for high security. MongoDB's use of dynamic schema design fosters a more flexible environment for data search, coding, integration, and database development. And it's optimal for content management systems and high query sites, such as analytics applications. So MySQL and MongoDB. Or you know what? You, you could consider a third option as my yet-to-be-created 
giz norm d b where giz refers to my late cat gizmo and norm for the ginormous amount of data it can process yeah this this needs to become a thing <laughs>